So we're going to do cortex. Cortex is going to be really, really similar to sketching cubics that we've got here. The only difference is that we're going to be doing those shapes that we had, the, the sort of four lines in our cortex. So I've said here, recall that if the x to the power of 4 term is positive, the tails both go upwards. Otherwise, they go downwards like this. And I think we'd also spoken about, as a bit of a reminder on the previous page, that if there is a single root, it crosses through. If there is a repeated root, it just bounces. If there was a triple repeated root, it was a point of inflection. And we started saying last lesson that if it also had an x minus d to the power of 4, like a 4 times repeated root, at x equals d, you would have a graph that actually was very similar to this one here. It's, it's a 4 repeated root. It's just touching it and bouncing back. So even ones, it bounces back. Odd ones, it passes through. OK, so this would be at D what it would look like for the four time repeated root. So let's have a look at this one. We need to think about the four thing, the three things or the four things, the, the three things, I think. The shape, the roots and the y intercept. So we're going to go a little bit quicker today. First of all, what type of cortic is this going to be, positive or negative? Positive. positive so the arms are going up, so it's going to be this kind of shape, like a W kind of shape. And the roots, Sufian, what are the roots of this? The roots, what are the bits that would make it equal zero? Minus one. Yep. Two and three. Minus one, two, and three. Zero. A zero as well. Don't forget this X that we've got at the beginning here, okay? So we've got minus one, two, three, and zero. And Manayim, what do you think the Y intercept is going to be? Remember the y-intercept is when, oh yeah, when x equals 0, you're right. I'm wrong. <laughs> the y-intercept, because we have 0 here, we just have 0 times whatever it's going to be 0. So the y-intercept, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So we're just going to go straight in now with drawing what that sketch is going to look like. These are the easiest kinds of ones because we've got four roots. So I'm going to mark on my roots at minus 1, 0, 2, and 3. Minus 1, 0, 2, and 3. And it's also crossing at this point that we've got here. We know it's a positive kind of shape. So I'm going to be starting with the tail upwards. And I'm going to be coming down through the minus 1, up through the 0, down through the 2, and up through the 3. So you get that kind of W, wiggly W kind of shape like that. easier than, than drawing the cubic. Yeah, it's kind of easier, just the shape of it sort of feels a bit easier to have the tails both going upwards. Okay. I'm just going to try another one. What do we notice that's different? What are the two things that look a bit different? There's a repeated root and it's negative as well because you can tell from this bit here if you were to expand it out you would get a negative and we also have this repeated root so the shape is going to be a negative cortic like an m kind of shape the tails are both going downwards and we're going to try and identify the roots that we have here as well so i'll just let you get started with some of that and then i'm going to pick on someone to give me some of the roots Lily, what do you think the roots are for this one? Yeah, and this one is going to be twice. So if you want to say that it's twice, to remind you it's a repeated root, you could put a little times two next to it, or you could write repeated root just to remind you that it's going to be just touching the graph when it's at two. OK, we've got those from these things that we have here. And then last of all, we want to think about what the y-intercept is. I find the y-intercept by substituting in the x is 0. So if x is 0, who thinks they can tell me what y would be? Y would be 12. Yeah, y would be 12, because you'd have negative 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So we know it's going to be crossing at positive 12 that we've got. So I'm going to go in with my axes. I know you've got lots of practice of this that you've done from homework. I always forget to label x and y. So we're going to say we've got it at minus 1 at 2. 
And that one's a repeated route. I like doing a star at a repeated route to remind me I'm going to just bounce at that place. And then my other one is at 3. So that's minus 1, 2, and 3. And I know it's also going to be crossing somewhere up here at 12. And roughly, where am I starting from? In which area am I going to start drawing? Um, bottom left, yeah. So I'm going to come down from here. I'm going to pass through the minus 1. I'll do this in a blue color so it looks a bit different. It's going to go through there. It's then going to bounce at 2. And then it's going to come down through the 3 like this. And remember, I said to you, you can type that into Desmos. You can get the Desmos app on your phone. You can do it on the computer. And you can confirm that it basically looks the same as that. Mine looks like it's got like the maximum point of that hump here. It might not be there. It might have been slightly to the left of it. It might have been slightly to the right of it. I don't know where that is until we do the chapter later on in, in Pure Maths, where you can find out where the, the tops of the hills and the bottom of the hills are as well. OK? Everyone got that one done? We're going to try a couple more, and then lots of practice. Shape, positive, negative? Positive, so it's tails going up. It's going to be a W shape. The roots are minus 1 and 1, and the 1 is a triple repeated root, OK? This isn't to the power of three. I'm just saying, reminder, that one is, has, is going to be a repeated root three times. And we know that a repeated root three times has a point of what? Would we call it a point of? Inflection. Point of inflection. Good. Where it goes flat and also crosses the line, which is kind of weird. It's completely flat and it also crosses the line. And the y-intercept, anyone? Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Good. So we've got minus 1, 1, and minus 1. I'm going to remind myself that's a different kind of root. So we have minus 1, 1, minus 1. And it's that kind of W sort of shape. Yep. Oh, yep. I've labeled it the wrong way around. Thank you for stopping me before it all went completely wrong. So that's the triple repeated root. Now, remember what a triple repeated root looks like. A triple repeated root looks like that. So let's just start drawing, and it, it usually will just work out. Now, the shape says we start up at the top here, and I'm going to go through this. So I'm going to go through here and through here, and then I'm going to go through that kind of triple repeated root shape like this. So although it hasn't got this W kind of shape, it still has got the idea of one, two, three, four. Like this bit has kind of got that change of direction happening in that section as well. And it's a useful reminder to say that over here is a point of inflection. And on a point of inflection, the gradient at this bit is actually zero. It's completely flat at that point, but it crosses the line at where it has a gradient of zero. Quite a weird idea. Do you remember we zoomed in on that graph and saw what it looked like? How many more have we got left? One more, and then you guys are going to do them, OK? So the last kind of one I wanted to show you about is this one, where we have a repeated root, but it's a repeated root four times. And we already said what that's going to look like. But let's just remind ourselves it's a, a quartic kind of graph. So it's either that kind of W-E shape or like that kind of shape for a quartic. And we're going to say that the roots, well, there's just one root this time. It's just that x is equal to 2. And that's four times that that root is appearing. And the y-intercept, when x is equal to 0, what would y be equal to? Good, 16. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So let's draw this. So it's going to be a root at 2. And it's crossing at 16. So it's actually just going to come down here, kind of flat at that point, 
and then comes back up again. So many go through 16. I'm not very good at aiming and getting them through the right bit that we've got there. So it looks kind of like a quadratic, but it's going to be a different shape to a quadratic. And I'll show you why on Desmos. So I'll let you just get that one written. We'll freeze the board. And I'll show you the differences on here. Yeah, so when you have a four repeated root, it doesn't look quite like a quadratic. I'll come back to the one that I've drawn. You might find it more helpful to see the one that's on here. This is what it looks like to the power of four. Let's just quickly check it crosses at 16. Yep, it does cross at 16 like we thought it would. But it doesn't have that same kind of shape as a quadratic. A quadratic tends to have that really familiar, like, rounded shape at the bottom. The quartic tends to have a very flat bottom. Okay? It's just like really, really flat at the bottom. And that's because of uh, the four repeated roots that we have there. Okay? If I did it to the power of 6, any guesses of what you think it would look like if I did it to the power of 6 instead? It would be even flatter. Let's just show that it's even flatter when it's to the power of 6. What about if I did it to the power of 10? It's going to be even flatter. But if I changed it to an odd number, what do you think would change? The, the shape's going to change. How would the shape change, Amina? It would flip over. I'm not sure that's what's going to happen. It's not going to flip over, no. It's going to look more like a cubic graph, okay? If I change it to an odd number, I'm going to go with 7. It looks like a cubic graph, but with a really flat section in the middle. Okay, so you can now get an idea of what it would look like if it was to the power of 7. Like, would you mean to, have to just zoom out a bit? It goes from the very bottom, and then it goes to the top. It doesn't do any other changes. So I was going to compare it originally to a quadratic. Look how the quadratic's got that very kind of smooth, rounded sort of shape at the bottom. As you increase the power, it will become flatter if it's just a repeated root. Repeated roots are going to behave in that kind of way that you've got. So that's the one we've just done there. You are going to do these sketches that we've got here. Careful of this negative. Make sure that the only thing that negative is going to do is make you think about the shape. And then we're going to do some questions from exercise 4B on the whiteboards. Okay, so I'm going to have a go at doing these sketches and then I'll pause the video there. <laughs> 